Let's consider a machine learning pipeline. The way that these pipelines work is you start with some data as well as some labels, and these are used to train the machine learning pipeline. Once the training is done, you will have a machine learning model that's trained, and then you can use this machine learning model to make predictions. Typically, we also analyze these predictions so that we know something about the precision of the model as well as the recall. But even if we have impressive numbers, we should always expect that our predictions will contain errors. Errors that we would like to address. And initially, your inclination might be that you're going to find the solution by fixing the machine learning model. And although there's certainly merit to this idea, it might not be pragmatic. After all, machine learning pipelines can be complex, and therefore it might just be sensible to maybe think if we can fix our data and labels instead. After all, the machine learning pipeline can only pick up patterns that exist in the data and in these labels. So if we want to understand why our machine learning pipeline is producing certain errors, it's probably a lot better to investigate the data and labels instead. And that means that instead of iterating on our machine learning model, we might want to start thinking about tactics to iterate on our data. And in this video, I want to give a simple example that highlights some tactics that we can use to make this iteration on data more effective. To explore our data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be probing a Raza pipeline. I have a function here called predict intent. And what this function does is it retrieves a pre-trained Raza pipeline, and it will show me the confidence that it has for certain intents, given some input text. The model here is trained on a variant of the mood bot. That is the assistant that you get when you run Raza init from the command line. When you run this command, you will generate a new project with some training data. The goal of the assistant is to cheer you up if you tell it that you're sad. And the pipeline that I'm using is the basic one that we provide with the init project. Still, there are some things that we can learn about this pipeline by probing the model and by checking the training data. For example, right now I'm saying hello, which is a standard way of greeting. But let's now change this into something with a bit more slang. Something like, sup you. If I run this, then we notice that we are no longer picking up the greet intent. In fact, the model currently thinks that we're trying to tell it that we're unhappy. Now, what we could do is we could try to look at the machine learning model to see if there's anything quirky happening. But what we can also do is we can have a look at the text that we are providing, and we can check if there's something similar to this text in our training data. And the training data is loaded in this data frame that I have over here. Now, I've got a data frame over here, which represents NLU data that was in my Raza project. I have text as well as an associated label. But by putting it in a data frame, I can more easily query it from the Jupyter Notebook. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to ask the data frame to give me all the examples that it can find with this subword over here. If I query the data frame for examples of texts, that contain this subword, we see two examples, super stoked and super sad. S-U-P in slang means what's up, but S-U-P as text also appears in super. So even though when you look at this example, you might consider it's quite weird that we are detecting the mood unhappy, by looking at our training data, I hope that you recognize that it's actually not that crazy. The way that we might fix this is to add this as an example in our training data. But I hope that you agree that the exercise that I'm doing here 
this probing of the model by checking our training data, that that is a pretty sensible exercise. It certainly gives some insight and it helps explain why the model is behaving in a certain way. So let us do another one. Let's consider the word good. And before I run this cell, I hope you might agree that if I say the word good, and if I wonder what intent it might appear in, then in a conversation we might be able to assume that it should be part of the mood great intent. If the assistant ever asks us, how are you? then we as a user might reply that we are good. And when we say just the word good, I hope you would agree that the correct intention here is to declare that we are indeed great. So let's see what the model thinks of this. Apparently, the model is convinced that we are trying to say goodbye. Mood great definitely is around as a second place, but just the word good, apparently, makes the model consider this intent. So again, let's see if we can explain that by looking at the training data. I'll zoom out just a little bit. If we look at texts where the subword good appears, then it seems like it appears in a lot of labels. It seems like you can use it to greet, you can use it to say goodbye. You can use it to affirm, to tell the assistant that indeed we agree with what it is saying. Then it seems that indeed we have three examples where we can say that we are indeed feeling great. But even in the opposite intent, where we declare that we're not feeling great, it also appears. So you might be able to imagine that the word good here doesn't contain a lot of effective information when it comes to assigning a label. But if you squint your eyes at these examples, you should notice something else happening too. Let's have a look at these two examples. Notice that for two different intents, I have two examples that are exactly the same. And this is something to be aware of. We cannot expect our intent detection model to separate these two examples into two separate intents because they are exactly the same. But let's now consider that perhaps we are not dealing with this example, but with a bigger project. In a bigger project, odds are that we're going to have intents that are commonly confused with each other, like the greet and goodbye example that we have over here. And it is for these intents that we wanna be careful and conscious about our training data. The downside of a bigger project though, is that our current approach won't scale. I think it's a sensible exercise what I'm doing here in the notebook, but this manual probing does have its limits. So that means that we should think about ways to maybe automate what we're doing here. We wanna make it easy for ourselves to guarantee high quality training data and that means that we should think of methods that are able to aid us. So we don't do everything manually. And there are actually a couple of techniques to consider here. Let's say that this is our training data. It has all of our NLU examples. And potentially what we could do is we could say, well, let's take that training data and let's analyze it to see if we can come up with recommendations on things that need to be checked first. There's a few easy things we can always do. Namely, we can check if we have an appropriate number of examples per intent. If we have a couple of intents with only three examples, we can already advise you to add more. But we can also maybe analyze this NLU data together with a model to detect if there is clear confusion between intents. A principled way of getting there is to say, well, let's apply cross-validated metrics. The simplest way to do that is to split the data set up into two pieces. And what you can then do is you can say, well, let's first train on the first piece and after that test on the second one. And then on this test set, we can have a look at the errors and we can do the same thing for the second part. And by checking the errors that are made on our test sets, we have an automated way to inform you which 
and tents are commonly confused together, and that might give you insights on how to improve your training data, which in turn is going to have a great effect on your machine learning pipeline. What's cool about this approach is that we might be able to automate this somewhat. We could say, well, let's run this every day to generate something of a report. After all, we get new data every day and we label. And by generating a report on a daily basis, we might be able to help people label more effectively. Now, this way of generating recommendations, that is something that is now made available as a feature inside of Raza X. So if you're interested in trying this out, you should be able to download the latest version of Raza X and give it a spin. If you want to give Raza X a spin with these new NLU insights, what you need to do is first run this command. This command will run all the cross validation that I mentioned earlier, and this will make sure that when you run Raza X, there will be a overview ready. I have already run this command, so instead I am just going to run Raza X. Inside Raza X, I can now find my intent insights. And you can find this view yourself if you go to the Insights tab right here. Now it deserves mentioning again that I am running the very basic Hello World example here, but I hope it's clear that this overview can inspire you to improve your data. Immediately I can see that there are a couple of intents that aren't performing well at all. And in particular, it tells me that I need to concern myself with the lack of training examples. Now note that the suggestions that I have here can be clicked and they will take me to the appropriate NLU inbox to help me get started with labeling right away. Now, to give you an impression of what else you can expect, here is a screenshot from a more elaborate project. And here you can see that the warnings indeed give you more elaborate suggestions. We can notify you that there's been particular misclassifications. We can also warn you that there might be potential bias. And we can also let you know when the model makes predictions with low confidence. And also here we can try to steer you to the right examples to label so that you might improve your overall pipeline. It is very important to keep iterating on your data as new data comes in. And I also hope that you appreciate that it's not so much a quantitative exercise. For a large part, we are concerning ourselves here with the quality of our training data, not just the quantity of it. It should also be said that internally in Raza, techniques that might help you label are an active area of research. We are actively thinking about what tools that we can make to make conversation-driven development easier. So having said that, definitely feel free to reach out to give us feedback. We are certainly interested in developing this tool further, so any feedback that you can give us on our form will be highly appreciated.